Hey, hello and welcome to Disciples Prosper. Super grateful to have you here today. You're in for a treat because today I want to talk about the, the phrase Disciples Prosper. I had a passenger recently ask me, oh, you know, about my online content and what I'm doing. And, and I said, you know, it's essentially the whole point of what I'm doing is to, to live correct principles enables us to be blessed. And that's how it's summed up. And, and he, you know, he, he had talked about, uh, yeah, if you, he was a doctor, a heart surgeon, and he's like, if you live the correct, you know, exercise and eat right, etc., and live these correct laws, then obviously you're going to be blessed. Obviously you can, can do well, but if you're eating a bunch of sugar and eating a bunch of fast food, etc., how can you expect to perform at high levels? How can you expect to have a fit body? It's, it just doesn't add up. Now, having said that, you know, there are times when I, I remember Rich Roll in his book uh, called Finding Ultra, it's an excellent book, uh, he, he talks about how he ran several Ironmans in a short period of time, and he's usually plant-based, but on this one occasion uh, on this race, you know, he's famished, he needs replenished, and he didn't have access to his regular plant-based food, so he ate some other food. I mean, like there's exceptions. Like when you have a disciplined life and watch what you eat, that doesn't mean you every day you follow this regimen and it cannot be broken, etc. There, are, you know, there are times when you in a situation. Like I have been this weekend working many many hours and um, and just go go go. And in fact, it's so busy that I to save a commute back and forth from home, I, I get a hotel. And as a result of that, I don't have access to my, my wife's home cooking. And as a result of that, I don't eat my wife's amazing plant-based home cooking. And, um, that's okay. Like, it's not a permanent thing. And it's, it's a temporary, because I need fuel. I can't expect myself to perform at high levels without zero fuel. But I don't make it a regular habit. I'm not eating fast food. but. The point I'm making is that when you live correct laws, you have access to correct the blessings of heaven. And it's not just about living correct laws on top of that. You know, if you want, if you want a certain outcome, all you have to do is live the laws that will give you that outcome. That's wonderful. But to become like Heavenly Father, you need to live more than just some correct laws because you want to get something in return. I believe that the greatest purpose of the greatest want of life is to become like him. Just like a child may aspire to be like his dad, or a, a, a young man or a young woman aspire to be like her mom. That when we want to become like him and have his outcomes and his blessed blessings and his um, powers, for lack of a better word, then we align ourselves with his teachings. We align ourselves with his ways. And men in their great vast knowledge of building skyscrapers and rocket ships have made a massive impact and, and have grown a lot. Nevertheless, man is nothing and less than the dust of the earth. I'm reminded of Moses who was, who, who was raised by a king that had all this power and authority and then he left this kingdom because he saw that something wasn't right. He comes into God's presence later. We learn about this in the Philadelphia Christ. He experiences God one-on-one, -on -one, face to face, and he's transfigured to be brought into God's presence. And after, after God leaves his presence, he falls to the earth totally deplete of, of ability to pick himself up, deplete of energy, and in that moment he recognizes something to the effect he says, wow, I never, until this time, I never realized that man is nothing. And so what I'm trying to, to say today is that you and I, we are mortals, we are finite, our bodies at least, and they will come to an end. And when we rely
rely on the arm of flesh and the wisdom of men, we're going to fall short. Yes, we may get skyscrapers. Yes, we may build a mansion. Yes, we may have a massive company. Yes, we may have a massive bank account. Yes, we we can do good with these things and build libraries and help serve and el eliminate poverty. Those are great and wonderful things and honorable things of the earth. Uh, what, what we're talking about as a disciple, prospering is more than just having the good and honorable things of the earth. It's more of learning how to become like Heavenly Father. And when you do that, when your heart is singled to Him, you start taking counsel vertically rather than horizontally. Now, horizontally, you still use the wisdom, um, inspired wisdom from the best books. I love how it's put in the Book of Mormon in uh, Second Nephi chapter 28. I believe it's verse 32. It says, you know, woe unto those that take counsel from men, save that counsel be inspired. So when, when you when you glean the truths from the best books and the best wisdom of the world, you glean what is right, you glean and you live it. And you take that in conjunction with inspiration from the vertical. And it often will, imp um, it often will give you insights and give you thoughts and questions. You'll get so much knowledge to a certain point and it will leave you wondering, Ah, as you ponder that and you seek to understand the truth from it and glean more from it, it leaves you with a question. And when you ask the question, when you inquire, we learn in the scriptures over and over, ask and you shall receive, knock and it shall be given unto you. When you do that, you get answers. And these answers are revelation. And this revelation is giving you access to the mind of God who helps you to develop and grow to become like Him. He gives you revelation upon revelation, uh, perfection upon perfection, line upon line, precept upon precept. So as you learn obedience and your abilities increase to obey the further light and truth, then you're given more. I love how it's put in the Doctrine and Covenants section 59. I believe it's verse 3. It says that there are many commandments given unto those that are righteous. I, I totally butchered that. But the, the point is, is that there's not just a list of 10 commandments. There's a lot more because as you align with God and you draw near to Him and He draws near to you, you have access to His guidance. You have access to His way. And you have access to the atonement, to, to Jesus Christ's teachings, and you live them. You, then you have access to His grace, Christ's grace, which enables you to understand God at a higher level and to draw closer to Him. It is so exhilarating. It, it gives you energy. It, it gives you a renewal of energy. It gives you, um, your body transforms into a, a healthy vessel that lengthens its stride and is, can run and not be weary. So, in short, thank you for being part of this podcast. Learn the teachings of Jesus Christ and the best books. Implement them. And don't just learn, 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 but implement. Learn by study and by faith in Christ. And ask for His help. Ask for His guidance. And then implement it. And when you do, you can know as we learn in the New Testament, I believe it's John 7, verse 17, that when you do his doctrine, you can know the truth of it. You can know whether it be of God or not. And as you continue to grow and progress doing those things, you're giving more. It's so beautiful. It's so amazing. How, that's, what the, that's what abundance is. That's what prosperity is, is to receive light and truth and to live it and to grow in intelligence, or in other words, in the glory of God, and to become like Him because you have access to His direct communion with Him. You, as a son or daughter of God, can commune with the Most High God through Jesus Christ, through the Mediator, and you have access to uh, through His counsel. And yeah, 
that's a, that's a wrap for today. Thanks for joining me.